Welcome, uh, Cart360 fans, to our first ever, um, we don't really have an official name for it yet, but we're calling it the Cart360 Studio. We're here at the uh, Praga North America tent uh, with Andrik Zine and uh, Blake Wonkowski. They've uh, been kind enough, Praga North America has been kind enough to be our uh, on location sponsor this weekend and help us bring this to you guys. Uh, great first day of, of official competition, I would say, qualifying in the books. A couple of notables, uh, John Norris took pole in KZ, but got a one position penalty because of uh, scrutineering being a, like a minute late or something. So Jordan Lennox Lamb is going to be your pole sitter, your official pole sitter. Uh, David Serra, quickest in tag senior. He's been, him and Stepanova Nikhil yeah. have been one, two almost every yeah. session today. Step. And they continued that in uh, qualifying. It, th those are the two premier categories. and uh, uh, four mile in S1. Uh, four mile in S1. He's, back. he's been out of a cart almost all year. He's moved out of the United States. Uh, he said he's been driving a little bit, but it's it's hard when he's not racing against yep. the top competition he's used to. It, so he doesn't really know where he's at. Uh, but he's on the DR cart still, and yeah, and put in a mega, mega yeah. lap. Three tenths clear almost. So he's been impressive all weekend. Yes, he has. So getting uh, Blake and, and Andrick. Andrick, uh, didn't make it into the fast group. No, I lost the chain, I think, on the third lap of the uh, the final practice session yesterday. So kind of uh, makes life difficult. But you were quick in the final session before qualifying, if I believe, even coming from the, the slower group. Um, in the last session, I wasn't so good. In one of the earlier sessions, yeah, I was pretty good. the second group. I remember seeing the times, and you were right up there. Right? Yeah, top, yeah. Top 15. -ish. Yeah, I think in the, in the first session, um, you know, we were like top five somewhere overall, and then I, I'm not sure in the in the next two because we kind of were doing some testing and just sort of uh, trying to get things sorted out for qualifying, but um, which we didn't really do. But, uh, <laughs> but you got to try. Right. And uh, and yeah, I mean, I think we have the speed. It's just kind of a matter of putting it together, you know. And now life gets more difficult because this track is pretty pretty narrow. I mean, you could maybe say technical if you wanted to be nice. And uh, and it's going to be super hard to pass, and I think there's probably going to be some pretty decent wreckage. I mean, you know, there was already in qualifying guys, uh, you know, hitting things in each other, and yep. I think it's it's going to be pretty brutal tomorrow. Yeah, like you said, I mean, call it technical. Um, you know, you, you really looking at it with the lines most people are taking, I mean, there's maybe two really good passing zones where you don't really have to throw it in there to make the pass. Yeah. And maybe two others where, I mean, you're... It's pretty, you're yeah, it's pretty hairy, it for there. sure. And it's, it, and it's, I mean, I will say, though, to, uh, you know, to, to you know, compliment Scusa, I mean, they did fix the straightaway. The straightaway is way smoother oh, way today. Smoother. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool, so thank you. And, the, and getting rid of the curve. And getting they, rid of the curve was nice. Track. Yeah, that was, like, a very good decision. Yes. You won't pop a chain again. Yeah. Won't pop then a chain. I won't pop any more chains. Yeah. There you go. Although I, I heard some kid in the scale line saying that he, he's he was complaining about it, and he said that he he lost three chains yesterday in that corner. And I'm like, okay, I mean, I lost I lost one, and I feel stupid. Right. If I lost three, I'd have been like, just maybe not hitting it at all, yeah. just like just to do laps. And there was actually some pretty quick drivers not even using the curve. Yeah, I didn't really see, to be honest. I, yeah, mean, I saw a few guys out there were up in the top ten that weren't even using the curb, so yeah. it was possible. But Yeah, I, but I think it was easier just to hit it, yeah. you know? It, it definitely was. And the racer and everyone's going to want to go. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, what, if it's worth a tenth, especially in qualifying, I mean, in yeah. the race. I mean, and and what happened with me was I didn't even hit the chain. It actually just slightly bent my axle, and it was enough to throw the chain. So, you know. Whatever. I spoke to a few other drivers that found that the front end got tweaked a little bit from using. Yeah, I've heard curve. guys like bending kingpins and things. Kingpins, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, Blake, uh, another year uh, closing, another year in the books as you just uh, team manager of Praga North America. The brand has exploded here in, in North America. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of guys in the tag. A lot, a lot of guys in the KZ and in the, in the S1, S4, S2 categories. How has that growth been for you guys? Uh, it's been phenomenal. I mean. Um, Ending last season, uh, we had a couple of victories, and then, and then we actually had a, a huge heartbreak at this event with a spark plug issue and uh, didn't even get off, off the grid. So um, we didn't get to really prove what we had in, in the tag category. I think last year we had a lot of speed and a lot of potential there, but uh, potential is uh, meaning that you didn't really do anything, right? So, um, But, uh, yeah, I mean, 
the shifter category has been phenomenal for us with uh, MRC has, has been huge on the West Coast. Uh, we've got, you know, a lot of other uh, shops, Brian Fisher, we've got CPI. Um, it's been great to have Card Sport North America come on board. That's That's been a phenomenal. They have a great facility in Mooresville and, uh, um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of the customer base, even even just the, the do-it-yourselfer guys have been able to do well on club level, regional level. So, um, you know, it's been a good year. It's a it's an easy product to use. It's it's getting even better as we uh, as time goes on. And, and uh, I'm, I'm just looking forward to going to 2016. We got some unique things, uh, new things, uh, front end caster camber kit that we're, we have released at this event. And they've been using it in Europe for the past two events, I believe, but we released it here. And uh, uh, I can tell you one thing: we gotta, we gotta make our kingpins a little stiffer for them curbs that were out there earlier. But I think we're okay now. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's been phenomenal. Even all the way down to the cadet stuff, we've had a lot of success in the cadet category, and that chassis really um, stayed the same over the past few years. When you know it's the, the wheels round, why try to make it a square so right. you, you know you don't change it? And uh, yeah, it's a lot of success. Uh, we've made a huge splash. We want to continue doing that and, and move forward. And, um, you know, Peter Patacek has been a huge supporter of the, the U.S. karting stuff, and he raced a lot with us last year and son. And it's great to see uh, Peter Jr. back here at the event yep. as well. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about the results today, and you had top two in S2. And then S5, Hunter Kelly and S5. So yeah, absolutely. Good shifters. And Callum Smith was Callum, third, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Callum yep. Swiss, Smith went third. Um, you know, and Musgraves has showed, Billy Musgraves showed a ton of speed. Pescador, our factory driver from Europe over here, has, has been fast uh, in S2 and and uh, and in KZ as well. And um, Jared Campbell's been on top yep. of the charts. I think he ended the day at the top of the charts yesterday. Yep. Um, so it's, it's, it's just been phenomenal I, I guess andrick and i just got to step this thing up here right, what's going on i mean moving, come on man. we're slacking over here now uh with ipk uh now running everything for formula k do you have quite a, a bit of involvement in the distribution of yeah formula that's k now? that's uh what's going to be coming up in the future i mean we we've got a great facility in in brookfield wisconsin which is just outside of milwaukee um you know we have a seven thousand square foot facility there it houses uh, all our race team stuff as well as uh um, you know, we usually have uh, anywhere from 60 to 80 chassis in stock, a lot of, a lot of uh, spare parts inventory, um, all the way to the, the clothing stuff as well. So um, uh, going into next year, I believe that what, what we'll end up seeing happen here is, is that the Formula K line will be um, distributed through us at Prague North America as well. And um, we'll, we'll work directly with everyone who's already involved. And, and we're, we're excited about that because uh, we're, we're growing the family and the, and the product. And, um, and I think both lines have phenomenal. I mean, look at the FK stuff today. has gone very – Jay Craig's been fast. Carlton's fast. Hayek's quick, you know. Um, Hayek put it in the wall yesterday pretty good, but uh, we don't talk too much about that. <laughs> I just got to throw it out there for him. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it's – I'm really excited, and I think bringing on a brand like Formula K and, and guys like Cash, um, he, he's a, he's a Cash, great guy. I mean, and any, anyone that's kind of been around uh, – big international karting i mean cash is a household name when absolutely it comes to, absolutely uh, team management and development so for sure and, and for me it's um you know i like to i like to think i'm a younger guy in this but uh you know it, for me i'm He's a younger old, guy with a old. Uh, yeah i got an old school mentality and and speaking with cash is uh it's been key because he he's got a lot of the same thoughts on things that I do, and, and we're able to share information with each other, and that's been really good and a, a breath of fresh air for me with the the IPK program. Yeah. So, now a trend in uh, kind of North America of the last couple of years, Tony Kart kind of started it with doing their own distribution in North America. Um, now CRG Nordam kind of doing the same thing, where they're running the distribution, just hiring people to run it. You guys are run pretty much that way. Uh, I also believe PSL and Burrell Art are a similar, not 100%, um, but there is a lot of involvement from the Burrell Art sure. factory. Uh, is it? Do you, have you found that that just helps smooth things out with, with just distribution and making sure that everyone's getting fair pricing and getting material that's always readily available? Because you know, you guys as a manufacturer are able to stock more because you're obviously for sure. making it for where sure. an importer if they don't have as much of a budget to carry all the product sometimes it's hard they're a little bit limited on their inventory and then as you start to grow it's a little bit harder to scale absolutely absolutely and the the biggest thing is um it's very tough nowadays for the mom and pop shops i yeah. mean that those days it's sad to say but those days are are coming to an end right now in carding it seems um and, and it's it's sad to see that but I think we've done it to ourselves in karting, to be honest. And um, 
I, I want to take a different approach with the industry and with us being able to stock it and and work uh, closely with our dealers and and you know I, I don't want to um, absolutely flood the market with Praga but I want to have a, a good dealer network that's supported by us um, at, you know and and if they can't afford to stock 10 20 chassis at a time and and you know 30 grand of, of spare parts right. it's easy to get um, you know, but, uh, you know, the other thing is you look at this industry and, and you know, how, how many entries are at this race right now? I think it, Tom said last night five, uh, over 500 for sure, almost five. Sure. 530. Okay, mostly. so yeah. we'll, we'll say it's, it's 530. It's a, it's a nice round number, right? Um, every one of us here, for some reason, continue to fight over those same, hundred, same 530 people that come right. to this event when we could branch out and um, try to bring new people in. And that's something that I'm going to work on. Uh, we'll have some pretty cool stuff going into next year in 2016, uh, some programs that I want to work with with uh, some you know engine manufacturers and things like that. I want to start bringing in some um, support to the entry level and new people, make it more inviting um, you know, it's tough when you tell a guy, hey, yeah, you can get in this with your kid, and that's great, but it's, you know, it, this this package that Andrick had, you know, new at this event is an $8,000 go-kart. Right. Wow, they're, they might go buy an ATV on Craigslist and exactly. go rip around with their kid, right? So let's, uh, you know, in the industry, let's use our heads. Let's let's get back to the basics. Maybe we got to do some four-cycle racing. Maybe, we, you know, things like that. Maybe we got to get at the club more um, to, to expand this thing, you know? I mean, Take a take our Sprinter van to a golf outing. I mean, those guys are driving up right in Porsches, no. Ferraris, and they're oh, hanging out. For sure, they're going to see one of these and want to buy five of them for them and their buddies to go to a club track and and race around with each other on a Wednesday, yep. right? So, yep. um, we we've got to open up. Uh, uh, we got to broaden our horizons. We got to open up our eyes to what's really out there and and stop fighting over these same 500 yeah. entries that come to Vegas or any other type of event that that may be out there. Yeah, I mean, you hit it on the head. It's Andrew, I'll get back to you. I had some experience in a past Super Nationals coming from the back. I had a bad qualifying effort one time. I was 80 something, I think. So I have, I know what you're going through right now. <laughs> Thank uh, you. What are you, what are you thinking for tomorrow? Just to make it out of that first turn, probably. Yeah, I mean the first <laughs> turn, I think, is going to be like just crucial. It's so difficult because, um, you know, for the people that aren't here. The straightaway is not necessarily that long. I mean, it was bumpy. It's a lot smoother now, but we were seeing a lot of people kind of, you know, taking some pretty unconventional lines, um, breaking into turn one just to try to miss some of those bumps and try to, you know, just get consistent, I think, which makes sense. But uh, it really narrowed the racing line down. Now that that's smoothed out, I think at least the starts will be okay, you know, the carts right. are going to be bouncing around. But um, the surface also changes as you kind of turn in or just before you start to turn yep. in, and it's like – a lot slipperier, I would say, than than pretty much every other corner on the track, and certainly than the braking zone. So, the starts are going to be really interesting. I, I just getting through, finding a way to survive. Yeah, that's I'm, the key. I'm hoping that the punch when we actually really see the punch off cone where it's at, that they actually do hold us to that punch off cone. Yeah. Because uh, if we, I think uh, if we can, where I mean, the start finish is really far it's down, way close down to there. Turn, which is great. Like we talked with Tom, I mean. The shifters may not may not even get out of third gear before they're back to the brakes, which is which is great. So yeah. hopefully with the tag stuff though, where you can get on the gas earlier, that they're going to kind of hold us to that, and we won't be carrying 50, 60 miles an hour into the corner. Yeah, we can just get through that section. Yeah, yeah, I think just getting through, and then you know again, um, key as always, it's, it's finishing races and just it's just trying to stay as clean as you can because. There's going to be wrecks. People are going to crash, and as long as you could just not be one of them, um, you know, odds are, are, you know, looking up. I think our time is running out here, so I think we'll go uh, say goodbye. Goodbye. But thanks for having us. Our camera guy can no, our camera can only go so long here, I think. So uh, okay. we did some research before coming on. <laughs> but I think we covered a lot of things today, and maybe we'll have you back by the end of the weekend. Uh, let's Sounds hope great. you make it to the final, Andrew. I think you can. I, I well, I definitely can, and um, I actually have a guaranteed starting spot. Oh, I won a raffle, exactly. oh, okay. so my entry was paid for, and I got pressure. a guaranteed spot. Yeah, so I mean, cool. it, it almost can't be too bad. All right, well, thanks. Uh, it could be like last year, but. But <laughs> let's not do that. We let's not talk about that. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having us, guys. Being the sponsor this weekend. Uh, we'll talk to you more this weekend. Good luck okay. to you guys. Thanks, Thank Chris. You. Thanks, Ronnie. All, right. All right, guys. So that's uh, our first show. We're going to end it with a great uh, 
lap around the track with some commentary from Andrick. He's going to walk you through all the corners uh, and give you a little bit of inside info on maybe where some of the bumps are, what kind of technique you need based on the grip level. So uh, enjoy that, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. See you tomorrow night, guys. Okay, we just exited the last corner. We're heading down the straightaway. It's a little bumpy, as you can see. Not too bad, though. Just after the start finish line is where the surface changes, and that's where I start to break. Got to get right up next to the apex here in one. Ease up all the exit. And even though two is a really wide corner, you want to try and shave off as much distance as you can, so you kind of hug the walls there. Three, four, and five are pretty difficult. You want to get uh, as close to the barriers at apex as you can. Coming around now by the mechanics, hard braking into turn uh, six, up over the curb, stay to the left. Uh, seven and eight are like one corner, really. It's a really long right-hander. Um, Turn nine, got to get right next to the uh, right next to the apex again. Use up all the course, uh, really fast corner. Eleven's a pretty tricky double right hander. Make sure you don't hit those curbs. Hard braking into the last corner, and back onto the straightaway. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed the lap.